Hello everyone, I'm Danzel Glovington, and this is the commentary track for my speedrun of The Lost Mind of Dr. Brain by Sierra. Hopefully in this video I can explain what I'm doing while I'm playing the game, and a little bit about the game itself, uh, which is a computer game that was released in the 1990s by Sierra. It's an educational game for children, and it's the third in a series of Dr. Brain games. You have ten stages to complete in this game, ten sections of the brain and you can choose the order of the first nine. I am Dr. Thaddeus P. Brain the Third. This run is completed in one hour, 22 minutes, and 35 Tight seconds, and I did this on July 15th, 2020. Now I had to type my name in with the mouse there, and the cursor appears on screen really no, early. That actually doesn't always happen. Um, sometimes I was allowed to use the keyboard to type in my name. And when that happened, the cursor appeared on screen at the start about one second later. So in this run, we had to use the mouse, and we got a bit of an extra time save there. The first stage I choose is Synaptic Clef. You'll see why as we do it. Uh, the goal of this one is to move the neural receptors, these cow things, from one side of the screen to the other. Get them into that container on the other on the right side. And. In this game, you can choose three difficulties, and um, each one determines how many puzzles you need to complete in order to finish a section. And for green difficulty, novice, it's 20. Yellow, expert, is 10. And genius, the red difficulty, is 7. And uh, we do genius level to save some time on this puzzle. They're pretty fast. Now, to guide these cows across the screen, you'll notice that my cursor was just in one spot the whole time. And actually... There's a way uh, that I learned from watching Marty K's old record, the speedrun of this game, that you can actually just hold your cursor in a very specific spot sometimes and hold down the mouse button and it'll get all 10 of them across that you need. I actually don't know any other way to beat the level. I wouldn't probably wouldn't be able to get the uh, this game speedrun without Marty K's video. Uh, this one's a bit different though. In the third section, you actually have to click the mouse and time your clicks uh, and holds, like how long you have to hold the click, and when you let go and when you re-click, pretty precisely. You see, I missed one there. I've never really gotten this one perfect. It's like a rite of passage to have one bonk into the cactus or the, the boulder. Um, now, I gotta mention, this one's pretty easy here, the fourth stage. You just put your mouse in that area and hold down, but on the first, the first three stages are all pixel-perfect positions. That's why I do this run, that's why I do this section first in the run. Because it can be really, really tough to get that pixel perfect spot. You'll see, in the first section, it took me a little while, even in this run here, that I, that I went with. Um, so I would reset a lot if it took a little while. This one is pixel perfect, this stage. Uh, only one pixel on the screen will get them across like this. And you have to click, you have to time your clicks as well. You cannot just hold down the click for this stage. Similar to stage three. Now for stages one and two, the pixel perfect positions are the Y positions only. There's a few X pixels that work. But on stage five, there's only one pixel on the whole screen that works. Uh, this one, we it takes a second, but we get through it. And that's this is first so that I can reset for a really good time because of how difficult it is to get these positions quickly. Uh, even a few mistakes are okay. I've been, I was resetting because I wanted to get a 1 hour 22 minute run in that range. I was resetting if this stage took longer than 4 minutes. This is also pixel perfect, but you just hold the mouse button down. And uh, you might have noticed, and I didn't say anything about it, I've been switching difficulties between. And that actually skips that... Yeehaw celebration. You have finished the synaptic and Dr. Elena and would have said what of percentage of the way through sections. the level we were Continue play is at your discretion. between each stage. So we swap difficulties to skip that. Not every puzzle in this game allows for that. Uh, and some have animations before the puzzle starts, not after they're done. Uh, so each stage, there's a different sort of strategy we use. Here comes the next one, 3D Construction. I chose this one second because uh, I was pretty bad at it. Now and it takes a lot of practice to get a super good time, and I really wanted it to be good in the run. So I would also reset if this one didn't save a little bit of time. Yeah, overall, I want it to be about a minute ahead, 
after these two stages. So for this puzzle 3D construction, it's pretty self-explanatory in the video. You have to uh, recreate the shape that you see by feeling, putting blocks into these grids and these two planes. You get the 3D shapes. And it's really tough to go fast. Uh, you'll see the me clicking in the corner after each stage. I'm clicking on the uh, yellow difficulty. That will skip Dr. Elena's congratulations message and what percentage of the way through the puzzle you are. All you have to do is spam the button as soon as you hear the horns and then stop clicking once your score goes up. So my strategy for this puzzle and how I got it to go so fast is to practice a lot. And um, when I'm playing it, I take one split second look at the example puzzle on the top. And as quickly as I can, I move my attention solely on the grid where I'm placing blocks so that I can quickly click on the right blocks. So knowing which ones to click on just from having a split second look at the top puzzle that's the key to saving the most amount of time on this for me. So I take a quick look and then quickly try to get the blocks. And like fundamentally, these are randomized puzzles. So a fastest possible time would have to have a lot of puzzles with fewer block clicks. And then you'd have to get those clicks real fast. Even if you could get them without having to look at the puzzle at all, like if you were that fast. Um, and sometimes you'll see me rotating the puzzle because I need to double check which blocks are in there because the orange blocks are covering some of the pink ones and that's what happens if you make a mistake that was a mistake right there it spun the bottom puzzle 360 degrees around that wastes time and yeah, i'm really worried about saving time in this puzzle when i'm doing runs it means another reset it means i have to push for a really fast synaptic cleft again so that's that's why i picked it second it's a really fast paced uh, puzzle puzzle and you have to click fast and click accurately and also know where to click really quick wasting time getting a puzzle wrong or not knowing what to click on is is huge on this one and the blaring horn sound effect every time you get one right does not help the situation it makes it more intense Let's see. So these are the kinds of reasons why I'm doing the commentary now instead of doing it while I'm playing. Playing a puzzle like this while talking would almost certainly slow me down. And coming up there's a puzzle where you have to react to the audio. Uh, so that's why I played listening to speakers instead of Bluetooth headphones. It sped up my reaction time and, and saved a ton of time in the speedrun uh, when I switched to the speakers and no microphone and doing... I decided I would get a really fast run before doing any commentary. So here we got a big time save. I'm, I'm pretty happy with this uh, 128 ahead going into Pentode. I should say I was, uh, you might have noticed the, the cursor was circling my time save there. Uh, the splits are not in part of the game, but I knew that where I would put them in the video. So I moved the cursor around where the splits were on stream. And I like now to do this, uh, if, I'm, if I'm doing well, if I'm feeling good, I like to uh, mess around with the animated objects with my cursor. I love to rub the earring for good luck. Here we got Pentoad. This puzzle is unlike anything I've ever seen. I've never seen a puzzle like this in a video game or uh, like board game or any type of puzzle thing. So um, Rathbone calls out the symbols and you can choose between elements, Roman numerals, Greek letters, or sign, American Sign Language. And when Rathbone calls it out, you then place it onto the field. And if you can place a tile next to another with the same symbol, you can clear them. And if you clear more tiles at once, you get more points. And there's just so much potential for time save in this if you want to do it fast. Uh, and the skill ceiling for this puzzle is really high. I would say that I got it down to this this time here. Um,
up. Uh, I think it's like seven minutes faster than the record was before I started running the game. Just this puzzle. Just seven minutes on this puzzle alone. Um, so that's most of it. That's most of the time save in the game. And this is also the longest split in the game. Uh, so some of the huge amount of time save you can get, you might notice the grid-like pattern I'm doing where I fill in the diagonals. That's uh, so that you can get the combos. But the huge thing you need to be able to do is react to Ratbones saying the symbol. If you can hear what's coming and click it before he finishes, he'll start the next one faster. So this it's really like reaction time based. This section is now five percent complete. And you'll he you heard Dr. Elena tell us we are five percent complete. The goal is to skip that, and I'll explain the skip for this puzzle soon. There's the skip in different puzzles is different. Uh, 3D construction, it was simple, just spam the button. For synaptic cleft, we had a little sacrifice, we actually switched difficulties. But on this one, um, there is a way to skip it, and it's difficult, so we'll talk about it more. I was explaining the big way to save time on this puzzle is to react to Ratbones saying the symbol. So if... Lithium. Lithium. Boron. Hydrogen. So if you can get it down, like before he finishes saying it, he'll start a new one. So if I can go bore up, he, he, and then know what is, what's coming and put it in the right spot, that's huge for saving time in this puzzle. If you can react and get it right. I'll keep talking about that. So another thing is not misclicking. If you accidentally put something that won't clear in between these diagonals, it'll waste time almost certainly in the puzzle. So that's the skill cap too, is not making no mistakes. It's an endurance challenge. Uh, you have to click fast. You want to fill these diagonals when you when you feel safe. So you have to play around and know when it feels safe to do that, like when you're not going to get something that gets you stuck. You'll see me get stuck at some point. And I'll be able to point it out. But you have to know when to fill the grids and react really quick. That's the biggest um, element in time saving in this. That's definitely the biggest biggest element Silicon. in time saving for this for this uh, puzzle Neon. Neon. and then avoiding mistakes is Neon. huge as well you'll Silicon. see when I make mistakes Neon. it's probably cost time Aluminum. and then after that there's a luck factor you'll see me filling the grid when I feel safe to do so because it puts tiles out faster it gives us the opportunity to get combos see there we filled the grid in an unsafe moment and aluminum couldn't go in but it's all right, because we were able to finish that puzzle quick enough. So to skip Dr. Elena's dialogue at the end of this puzzle, um, it's actually kind of a challenge. And in the in the 129, one hour, 29 minute record I got before this run, um, I didn't even try it at all because if you mess it up, you end up switching difficulties, which is a lot slower than just listening to the dialogue. So I would say that without even trying, you're giving up a potential of about, you know, a few seconds times 20 because there's 20 novice stages in this, like I said earlier. Uh, so it's a, maybe a minute, maybe a minute and a half if you get all the dialogue skips um, compared to if you don't even try. But if you try and make mistakes, then you're going to be slower than if you didn't try. So I did get a bunch of them in this. To now I'll explain how to get them. When you finish the stage, the clock will strike 12. Uh, if you don't click on the field again, after completing the stage, you can go into the difficulty box, click to skip Rathbone's congratulations message like this, and then click the difficulty before the curtain comes down to skip Dr. Elena's dialogue. So you have to do those specific clicks, and that has to be if you solve the puzzle without an additional click on the field after. If you do click on the puzzle after, you have to like do this... You have to click into the difficulty box to change the hotspot of your mouse about what's being focused on. So if you click after solving the puzzle, go into the difficulty box and, and click around for a little bit away from any of the buttons. And then right when the curtain's about to come down, click on one of the difficulties before it touches the bottom. Uh, I mess it up sometimes. We'll see how it do I do in the record here. If you get it 20 times, or 19 times rather, it's a pretty big time save. Chromium. But more importantly, you want to play the puzzle well. There's a high skill ceiling for this. It's a ton of potential time save compared to just trying to play it without caring about how fast you go. Um, 
And I really kind of got like addicted to this part of the game. <laughs> I'm at, uh, you'll see uh, it could be faster than this still. But it's a really long split, so um, see if we get the skip here. We do. Nope. Oh yeah, we got a partial skip there. That can happen too. If you click the uh, difficulty swap button at a particular time before the curtain comes down, Dr. Elena will still start talking. Uh, but you can still skip it if you do it again. Sometimes though it won't work. You might go into the other difficulty. And I think there's a way to control that, but I can't put my finger on it. Here we see a mistake leading to a big problem. This is going to be a slower pentode. We do get a little bit of a bailout. And finally we get the nickel. You can get stuck um, like that for a little while. Like you might not lose, but it can slow you down quite a bit. Because you're busy getting just those two tile clears and listening to every single thing that's coming out to make sure you don't lose. When you have to listen to every single one, that's slow. Nickel. Nickel. Arsenic. Germanium. Gallium. So, Gallium. Dr. Brain, the series, Selenium. and Sierra, the company, were Zinc. the booming computer game co industry company. Uh, I don't know if everybody watching knows this. Uh, but it, when, I, when I was a kid, before the internet was high speed, and before games could be online, PC games, games for your computer, were like this. This was like the most popular one. Not really, but this company had the most popular ones. Um, Sierra released King's Quest V and King's Quest VI. Those were both the best-selling games of all time when they came when they came out, like in their heyday. And then I think StarCraft surpassed them. So you can see where uh, the gaming industry went after that, the PC gaming industry. Um, so this was the kind of game that I played in the 90s on my computer, on Windows 98. And then Windows XP. Yeah, I also had Mist. Sad Moody in the chat talking about Mist. Uh, I didn't own this game, but this one was at my elementary school. But the Dr. Brain series in general, I did own the prequel to this game and the sequel. So the Island of Dr. Brain, which I also have the world record in, and uh, there are other categories for that game I might go for runs in. And then the sequel to this game, The Time Warp of Dr. Brain. I have the world record. Uh, I want to go for the world record in that. I don't have it. That's going to be a tough one. There's a lot of really hard puzzles in that game. This one was challenging as well. Uh, but I, I remember this one at the school. It would be the kind of game that I would run to at the lunch recess in the computer lab. If you were the first one there, you could play it. Uh, eventually, somebody would complain and you'd get kicked off. But you could play it as, late, as long as you could. And I remember beating protect all these games. We enjoyed them at my house, me and my siblings. Um, we wanted some of them, so we got, like, the Zumbinis. We got, like I said, some of them came with our computer, the Sierra games. Uh, King's Quest Six, King's Quest V, I think we bought. A bunch of games. The Incredible Machine uh, came with our computer. I never owned this one, like I said, but I did want to get... I was inspired to do some Dr. Brain speedruns. Um, I saw that this one already had a run by Marty K. Definitely that's where I got a lot of the strats uh, and learned how to do some of the stages. Time wouldn't be nearly this fast if I had to do everything on my own from scratch. Rhodium. Uh, I, th I feel like I did a lot for this puzzle in particular. I pretty much built this strat. Um, and I'll make a video on how to get fast at this puzzle. And we'll like analyze games. Because it's specific. There's a lot of things you can do to, to ensure that you will have a faster puzzle. Um, and rely less on luck and things like that. This section is now 40% complete. So this game, things that I found out through research after I started speedrunning, um, this game's quite a bit different from the first two in the series. The first two were more like the Sierra Quest games, where you had point-and-click adventure style, and you could interact with the environment with like the eye icon. Um, and read all these this text and, and it, the environment was all fleshed out whereas this is a set of mini games that you click on a, on a level and you start playing uh, and then you just play each one until you're done uh, and that actually caused it to get mixed reviews upon its release and the reasoning for it is also something that's been explained um, Sierra was more interested in getting games into schools at this point around 95 after a few of their games had done really well that way they decided instead of Dr. Brain moving forward um, like the quest series 
for entertainment. It would be more of an educational game. And so they bought a company that was specialized in making educational games. I forget the name of this other company. But they bought the, this other company out. Sierra did this. And then they gave them the Dr. Brain intellectual property to make two games out of. And that's what happened for um, The Lost Mind, this game that I'm playing, and Time Warp, the sequel to this game of Dr. Brain. And they both have this sort of uh, choose your stage element to them and isolated games within a, you know, a loosely based structure compared to the uh, previous two titles to these, which had a more integrated story and environment. So if you're familiar with the series, you might know what I'm talking about. This game is also when they did away with any kind of copy protected puzzles. Um, you don't need the manual to play this game. Certain things like packaging, those peripheral things that were packaged with computer games in the 90s like maps and manuals and booklets. Uh, this one did away with that, whereas the previous Dr. Brain titles included that kind of stuff. Collectibles. Iridium. Thallium. Lead. Osmium. Osmium, iridium, osmium. And um, when Gold. I started doing runs for this, Mercury, uh, I had to learn each stage like one at Mercury, a time. And then what I noticed Gold. was if I did a stage Osmium, like iridium, one section, and then I did it again right away, I would get a faster Gold. time. Mercury, so if I did Gold. a section, a section, Osmium, and then I did a different one, iridium, and then went back to the section before, I wouldn't get as fast of a time. So I instantly recognized that a full run of this game will never be as good as a potential individual level run uh, or combination, like a segmented run. So I'm definitely thinking about doing some individual level runs. Um, but maybe not with the any percent route. You'll notice in some of these puzzles we do different routes. This one we're doing all novice level puzzles because uh, they're way faster on Pentode. If you if we were to do a genius, they would take uh, minimum three to five minutes each. Some of them can take eight to ten minutes. And in novice level, they all take about a minute to a minute and a half. So that's why we do novice level for Pentode and the any percent run. But in Train of Thought, which is coming up after this, for example, we did, I did uh, the old record by Marty K did seven genius levels because that's required to beat a section if you do genius. But what I did was six genius levels, which took me to 90% complete. And then I did one expert level, which is faster and completed it. So I recognize that there are some routing things I could have done to make the game faster right right when I watched the first record. And then notice that that's separate from getting really good at a puzzle, like an individual puzzle, because stringing all the levels together will never be as good as how, how well you could do if you grinded one segment of this game. Uh, and to be as fast as you could. Maybe some of them could be maxed out so that you could get a very similar time. But ones with a really high skill ceiling, a full run, getting your, the best in the world, that's, um, if, if I grind out an IL, I'm sure I could get a faster on it. So that's one thing I noticed quick. So it was all about how well can I retain the strats and the skills to do all the runs in a row. All <laughs> And as I was doing runs, I really wanted a better time before, once I found out uh, it was going to be a lot better to do post commentary than live commentary, I really wanted a fast run before I even bothered doing commentary. Uh, so I would, I did a lot of resets uh, because the run just wasn't fast enough. Uh, at first I definitely wanted a sub 125 because when I got my first sub 130 time, I thought, look at all these glaring mistakes. I've made the run so much faster, but you can't even tell because I don't have the good the good skill showing in the run. So I knew I was going to want to do a better run. And then I thought, okay, sub 125, that'll be a good time. And as I was doing it, the run would die. Like on some random stage, maybe to RNG, uh, or usually to some um, problem, some mistake that I make. Or in some cases... Uh, that I didn't understand how to play the puzzle well enough. And in those cases, when I did play the puzzle better, I could consistently save like a minute here. Like you'll noticing the time saves that I'm going to get for this run. They're consistent time saves. 
The only thing I had to reset over and over again was Synaptic Cleft. And then I would get a run past Synaptic Cleft to get a lot of time saves, and then hit somewhere where I had to reset because I realized... Or I made a mistake, but then I realized through my new sums of best that I could consistently go for a, a, a sub 124. So I knew I would reset if my best possible was going to be worse than 123. Then it happened again. I got really far into a 123 pace run and made a mistake and realized I shouldn't accept a 123. I, I can consistently get times that will lead to a 122. And so that's what created the standards needed to get this run. And that's what I was resetting so much for. My plan now is to speed run... Uh, only genius level puzzles. Iridium. And I was speaking to this Marty K. And uh, currently he does have a video of the genius levels all completed. Or just the ones that you need to beat the game. But only use genius level only. You can't play any other difficulty is the, the rule. And uh, there's a puzzle later on where you can skip it. And he doesn't skip it because he didn't know about it at the time of making the video. And we're discussing. I think, yeah, we're going to let you skip it. But... Not in the IL, but maybe uh, in full game runs. Yeah, we're gonna let them skip it. But now, like thinking, there's this any percent, and then there could be any difficulties, no glitching, which meant you couldn't skip any of this dialogue either. Or so I would maybe classify it as any percent with no puzzle skips, so that you could still do the dialogue skipping, but you can't do a word search skip, which will be coming up near the end of the run. And then a genius level where it's also you you are allowed to, and then another genius level where you're not. Because that puzzle would be interesting, and certainly any IL that would track that stage, uh, any um, leaderboard for just that stage, it would have to be without the glitch. <laughs> So that that influenced my level order for this too. Like Pentode's this early because it's like an endurance test. You know, you want to know whether your run is on pace before you're in too far into it. I moved Pentode around before when I wasn't as comfortable with other stages. And I think a flexible level order means you should try different level orders, right? So I tried a bunch of different ones, and always Synaptic Cleft first. <laughs> that's the only one that's always been there. And Dreamland, you have to do last, like I said at the beginning. You can only choose the order of the first nine stages. The Pentode early is good, relatively early, because it's an endurance test. You play for a long time. You know, you're clicking as fast as you can for this whole time. And you you also have to take you know the pressure into account of the dialogue skip making mistakes so um, seeing if this one saved you time or lost you time it's nice to get it out of the way early and compared to the 128 that I have I might have referred to it as a 129 earlier in this video but it's a 128 that I'm playing against. Um, it was a good pentode. It was a 25-minute pentode, but I wanted faster. I wasn't willing to accept the 25-minute again because I didn't have any dialogue skips in, in my 1-hour 28 video. So this time I got a bunch of dialogue skips. They look good. You've been watching them this whole time. I, I haven't even paid attention if we had made any mistakes yet on the dialogue skips. Let's see this one. Yeah, it's a good one. Um, so I wanted that in the video, right? And I also wanted it to save more time. So this one is going to be sub 25 minute for the split, and it could have been faster. I was hoping, I was hoping to get like a, a 30 second cut. I could have gone for a one minute cut. Uh, we end up getting, um, well, we'll see the cut soon enough. But yeah, I went with it. This is this is how we did it. It was uh, just off of my standard. But I'm glad I didn't reset because we got uh, some lucky time save later in the game. So after this, we got Train of Thought. I put it next because Train of Thought, uh, as you'll see, is a is a puzzle game 
where oh, to speedrun we've developed strategies, Marty Kay's strategies that I again essentially simply copied from watching his old record video. Uh, if you mess up, you lose time. Like the, the strategies are done in such a way that if you get them all exactly the way you need to go, you're maxed it out. <laughs> At least until someone finds a better strategy. So in the next stage, I put it high up because if you make a mistake, it's I'm automatically going to reset a run. If there's a, if there's a puzzle in this game where you can max out the time save that easily, I'm going to do it. Uh, and in this case, train of thought is one of those. But I mean, it's no free picnic. It could be it could be that I make a mistake in it. So I leave it high up enough. It's also a short level. I leave it high up enough in the run that I can uh, feel comfortable. Arsenic. after it Arsenic. going for some fast Rubidium. times in the later puzzles knowing I have a perfect train of thought in Arsenic. the run selenium strontium krypton zirconium Zirconium. Zirconium was always the one that I remember from this game growing up. Zirconium. You walk into the computer room, grade 5, grade 6, whenever I was. You know, 1998. A few years. The game probably had already been out at the school. Strontium. Lunchtime, Arsenic. your teacher Zirconium. held you back because your desk was messy. You go in, someone already has the computer, they're already playing. Strontium. And uh, zirconium. you hear zirconium, zirconium, zirconium. 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 Ruthenium. 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 Molybdenum. So I'll briefly talk about Palladium. it. This stage, rhodium. It's bizarre, right? Like this, this puzzle, as I've tried to convey. And it's got this mysterious ability to go really, really fast. Rhodium. <laughs> Silver. On the other difficulties, it's tremendously more difficult, especially on genius level. When you're on genius level, one of the tiles gets left behind when you clear. Ruthenium. Palladium. Palladium. And you are just at the mercy Technadium. of the symbols. Palladium. I should point Palladium. out, the Rodium. number of different symbols in Palladium. the puzzles is Rodium. different for each puzzle. Ruthenium. I'm not sure the extent of the Rodium. randomness that occurs in this Rodium. game, but sometimes Rodium. you get puzzles with fewer Palladium. symbols, Niobium. fewer different ones. Rodium. And that increases your odds Rodium. of quickly getting combos Oxygen. dramatically. Silver. Oxid. So, uh, in in a Technadium. in a novice level speed Palladium. run, this will affect Oxid. the time probably Palladium. by a, a minute or two, uh, maybe even up to four Silver. minutes Oxid. or more. I don't know. Um, for this Niobium. stage alone, depending Malibdum. on if it's possible to get an Niobium. entire set of Ruthenium. puzzles with the smallest number Palladium. of symbols, and you get very good luck and you get some really fast you combos, the puzzles will all be under a minute long. You can get a 19-minute stage. It's possible. Continued players at your discretion. So oh, the thank that's you. that's the mysterious thing the about this. We did it. That speech is unskippable, as far as I know. And we made it through Pentode. Now there we go. We saved 21 seconds. Now you see, I probably didn't circle that with the cursor. I wasn't that excited about that time save. I wanted 30. Um, we didn't even gold. But the best possible time is still a 122, and I know that there's golds coming up. So uh, I, because we're going for a 122, I didn't reset. Now I'm glad that I didn't. Train of thought. But Pentode, it's got this potential. The Pentode potential. All right, this is the game that I remember most vividly f f from when I was a kid. The train of thought where you have to direct the balls into the, the stations. We'll be needing the blue ball These now. strategies were found by, or the, at least I, I found them from watching Marty K's video. And I learned them until I was comfortable getting them every time. Uh, I'll make a video. I think already just by watching this, you could learn this. You know, you don't really need someone to explain it. Uh, but if some, if you, for the sake of uh, posterity, and if anyone would like, and I might like to see it in the future, I I probably make a video that will. Or I'll go through each stage in detail how you solve it, because uh, it's the same every time. 
And it's not exactly trivial. You have to click on the things at the right time. If you don't, you lose a bunch. Like, you mess up. If the balls crash, if you put the wrong ball in the station, the wrong color, you're done. If that had happened, I would have reset no matter how far ahead of the run I am. So that's why I uh, put this one relatively early in the run, still in the first half. Yeah, it's a pretty chaotic puzzle. Like, imagine just playing this trying to figure it out yourself. <laughs> I don't. I didn't think so. That's why I just watched we'll Marty's run. The... We'll be needing the blue ball now. This is one of the tougher ones. I'd say stage three and stage five are the toughest on this. Um, now for the route, we do in this record six please. genius stages and one expert stage. That's faster than Marty's old route. We'll be the the, uh, the the final expert stage is like 10 seconds faster than the, the, the seventh genius stage, or the first expert stage, I should say, is like 10 seconds faster than the seventh genius Talk stage. The red ball, if you please. So it saves time to switch difficulties after you complete six genius stages in any percent. That's why I think categories for the difficulties is we'll an interesting idea. We'll be needing the Dock the red ball if you please. And to skip the dialogue in this, it's uh, you have to make sure that the lever, the start stop lever, is going down. If you press too early, you we'll actually switch difficulties and don't get the points for the puzzle. Uh, so if you want to skip the oh yeah, this is the real that's a real quick click there. I just did a click that's very quick. Uh, but yeah, to skip the dialogue from Dr. Oleda on this one, you have to click on the difficulty swap button after the lever has gone down to stop, not before. And then just spam the button until the score goes up. Yeah, some more frantic click in here, but once you learn it... I think I had to reset on a misclick on this stage uh, one time after I got it down. More likely, if I had to reset train of thought, it was... Uh, an unexpected interruption of my brain processing rather than an expected uh, failure of a difficult strat. So I would usually have to reset on this stage because I messed up something easy. But this puzzle is actually is really fun casually, especially the easier difficulties. <laughs> Dock the blue ball and it's also really fun to speedrun. Really good puzzle. Now we're going to swap to expert mode to do the easier and faster final puzzle. Dock the gray ball if you please. And then we're on to music. Music is a fun one that I swapped around a bunch. Uh, right now it's right where it needs to be. You know, it could have could have gone before train of thought could have we'll gone be before pento because there's a lot of potential uh will be for music to go good or bad when we get to it all right we've completed you have train of, thought. train of thought and are ready to good time save i didn't get gold other brain um, I, that could have been the reason i didn't discretion. get gold could have been a, a number of things because uh, it was you know this strat is pretty maxed out it could have been, and we'll see here. I'll be able to explain a bit more as soon as we get back to the laboratory. All right, so it wasn't Rathbone's transformation because this is a pretty fast one. Um, so it could have been my clicking, you know? I, if I click now start and stop the on the stages, region. that affects how quickly you beat the stage. Uh, also, I might have only lost gold by like one second. I'm not sure. <laughs> Anyway, this puzzle's great. This music puzzle, also a favorite of mine as a child, because I was able to do the genius level puzzles, even at like nine to 10 years old. Unusual at my school for someone you to be able to do to these. The but they, were, they weren't that hard for me because I could recognize uh, how to read the music. And when I was studying this for the speed run, I actually wrote out this music, um, the correct answers, like the final thing you need to look at. I wrote it down on music paper so I could refer to it while I was learning it. But then once I learned it, you need to memorize every bar of this thing. You need to memorize how it's supposed to look and what clicks you need to do to make it go the right way. So I practiced all these until I got them. 
And just like a uh, train of thought, we're going to do six to genius level country. stages and one expert level stage. Uh, unlike Marty K's old world record. This saves some time on that. And it can go faster depending on the random uh, placements of these measures. The more you have to move them around, the longer it's going to take. And sometimes you don't have to move them around as much. It's just uh, the way that the level uh, layout is when you ju when you start the stage. You don't get to control that. It's random. I made a mistake here. Yeah, I have the, the Mendelssohn. I have the low note. This is the worst mistake in the music stage, I can tell. I have the, yeah, that's the one. The 16th note needed to be lower on the upper staff. The D instead of the E. Bom, bom, bom. So I'm angry. I think I wiggled the cursor around there because that was a big mistake. And I was considering resetting. Because <laughs> think about how fast this could be if you just oh, instantly God. recognize where they all have to go and you click all the buttons really fast. I even have a theory that it could be even faster with... Um, Selecting more than two measures at a time when hitting switch because that does stuff It doesn't seem to help you ever but I think there might be a, a way or two that it could in some random situations um, Definitely though the skill ceiling on this I could save so much more time even if I don't have to rely on random uh, placements of measures some good strategies are recognizing when you have to flip multiple um, measures Horizontally, you can do them all at once if you can find them all. So I could increase my skill and go faster on this stage by doing that. I like to hear you, Andy. Uh, but this is pretty good. This isn't the fastest I've ever done the stage, but I think it will show up as a gold split uh, because I deleted some of my gold splits before this run came out. You can tell I'm enjoying the stage if I follow the music along with my cursor. And this this um, section of the game also has a very simple dialogue skip glitch execution. If you got a mistake in any of these, clicking while it's playing will stop it from playing. So if you're clicking and not and it doesn't stop, that means you got it right. So if you do that, you can just spam click the difficulty switch button. It won't good, switch till it gives you, you the points. And once it gives you the points, you just stop clicking. So you can dialogue skip easily on this stage too. What's not easy is perfectly solving this puzzle. It's like, this is a tough one. This in particular is a tough one for me. Maybe it's not for others. And this is probably some kind of gatekeeping in the run. I, I would have to believe that being able to read music is a huge advantage in at least learning this puzzle. So you'll notice there's a mistake at the end. I caught it before uh, much happened, but that's this is me, like, it's wrong. I'm pressing play and then clicking and it stops playing. And then I, that means I know it's wrong. I can look for a mistake. So you see there, I made some mistakes. We lost some time. Definitely some potential on this one. But I've been waiting it out. You know, I'm used to this level. Um, so I know when I, it feels okay. And that wasn't that bad of a, of a waiting a period. Keyboard. Of course, there you know the potential. It could go faster. This is a good one. Um... And just like all the other stages, I can make a video that details how to solve these very quickly, uh, or at least how to learn them. You're, you're going to need to practice them to solve them quickly, but how to learn them. Um, there's some really simple cues uh, that probably would help for people who don't know how to read music as well. So of all the stages, this one might require a tutorial video the most. Yep. Takes me a while to see this mistake too. This is a nice song. This might be my favorite one. So yeah, I guess I should explain. I haven't said so in the video. I actually went to university for music and I played piano for like 11 years of lessons of piano. Uh, I went to university for opera and got a degree in music uh, so and when i was 10 i was taking piano um when i played this game as a kid like i said i could solve the genius ones uh certainly better than anyone else i could remember 
Uh, so all of that now, I think, helped me learn how to get a time on this stage that's quite a bit faster than before. Uh, and raise the skill ceiling. I know this could go much faster, especially with someone, um... Great job. With some luck. Dr. Brain has his musical intelligence so just grinding out some, some replays of this play. stage. I know it can you go have faster. You a sufficient number of musical puzzles to move on to one of the other brain sections. Continued play is at your discretion. You'll see the expert levels are, uh, less opportunity. Goodbye! Because... You can horizontally change the, uh, only horizontally change the measures, you cannot vertically change them. So switching to expert mode at the end, it's a faster stage, but uh, all of expert modes are probably um, faster. You just have to do ten of them instead of seven, so in any percent it only makes sense to do one expert. Although not, I haven't timed it, I just assume so. The music is so fast when you do the, the route. Now, motor programming is a deceptive puzzle. You know, it's this one you just do a bunch of menuing. Um, the solutions, once again, I got from the Marty K video, and also the fact that the expert solutions are the fastest, at least uh, the to our knowledge. I haven't looked into it. And the solutions are fixed. Uh, so, time saving this, though. You know, it might seem deceptively simple. You have the menu item, you just read them off a sheet and put them in. But you, it's menuing. How quickly can you get those options in, or those programs in, right? This section is now so you can't let your guard down during this period. I did lower it, though, because I felt by this point uh, the chance of me making a big mistake that cost the run. Because I wanted to save, right now I want to cut about that 50 seconds, you know? It says their possible time save, it says 49.75. I want to cut that or get a gold split in this run. That's my goal. So, um, I'm st there's still a lot of pressure on it. But I moved it lower in the run because I did feel confident there was less of a chance of me making a run ending mistake in this one than the earlier ones f to get a 122. Even if I save that this 45 seconds instead of 50, complete. that's not going to affect my end time was... as much as uh, worry enough to reset, so. <laughs> Marty's pointing out in chat that the last measure in the expert level that I was doing for music the last measure in the piece was rhythmically wrong. It went you had to get it correct, you have to <laughs> you have to put it incorrect. I actually am not certain of that, this but I'll take Marty's word for it. Complete. Let us do it. So I'll point it out. In my 128.09, I have a, a big mistakes in this run. I caught, lost, like I said, 50 seconds was what I was going to go for to get a gold. I didn't quite get it. Yeah, this could improve. I think I make a small mistake at some point in this run. If you can catch it, I press start when one of the moves is wrong, but I catch it really fast, press stop, change the move, press start again. So it could be maybe 10 seconds faster if you're really fast at the mouse menuing maybe even faster this than that is now 40 so don't complete. sleep on this level it's not just a, a victory lap it's not just a that breather in the middle like of the run either it's it's a it's a level where you can save a lot of time This section is now 50% complete. Let us... So aside from having these written down in front of me while doing the run, and having all the solutions written from watching the Marty K video, 
I also am trying to memorize what I have to put into the programs before I have to click on them so that I don't have to look up and down or divert my attention from the menuing to read what I have to put in. So the memorization of these programs is a time saver, as well as good mouse movement and precision. So one of the techniques I use is between stages I chant the program. Sub move, move, sub right, sub pick up. Move, pick up, left, left, move, move, pick up. And see, this is the mistake I was talking about earlier. There's move instead of sub there. Sub move, move, sub right, move, pick up. But the chanting helps, I think. It's crazy to think of a puzzle where all you're doing is trying to copy things that you have written down. And even that can be fast or slow. <laughs> Imagine if these were randomized and every stage was different every single time you played. They found a way to like r have an algorithm that puts blocks, brands, and monsters in such a way that you will always be able to solve it. And they found a way to make it like require a certain number of moves usually and make it pretty tricky. If that was the case, this would be a completely different run. Like, like trying to go fast in this. First of all, you'd never be able to get it as fast this as this. Is now if you, if you, complete. they were not predetermined like they are. But that your was. thought process and how you solve it would be so different. Like my technique here is to try and memorize all of these commands and be precise with the mouse. So I'm using techniques that improve that quality. I'm not trying to actually solve these puzzles as if I were looking at them for the first time. This section is now 90% complete. And I'll point out on this around. stage, if you try to skip Dr. Edna's dialogue where she tells you what percentage of the way through you are, uh, it won't go to the next stage. It'll skip. You won't go to the other difficulty, but the stage won't progress. Uh, so in the any percent run, uh, we don't even. I don't even go for the skip. We just listen to Doctor Edna talk. Um, I'm not interested in uh, f locking up the the level screen. You can progress to the next stage by pressing start stop. Great programming. Right, yeah. You just Dr. listen to Brain her in this one. Motor skills returned by your excellent puzzle Only a 40 second play. save. Finished the programming so that quick mistake there. I had to suffer to through that. I had to put up with that. That could be 10 seconds faster. Discretion. And that's just by my standards. I'm sure other people could probably do that faster than 10 seconds. Faster than that. Okay, Neural Maze, oh. These stages are randomized. <laughs> and uh, this one you're given a, a little token and you drag it by holding the mouse down as little now teleporters. The neural maze. First, let's see what kind of rat bone luck. This is, I think the worst rat bone luck is the concrete rat bone. But we gotta rub the earring for good luck. That means we're in a good, good mood, feeling good about the run still. If you see me just leave the cursor on the screen and not touch anything with it, then uh, that means I'm like focused, intense, not really happy with the run. So you, here we go. Yeah, you move on to these teleporters. You can also go through these tubes, start to finish. There's a little mini map there. Uh, the the puzzles are randomized, and if you do them on um, expert or genius, they take forever. <laughs> They're so slow. One day maybe. I don't know if anyone could ever be faster at those. So we do 20 novice stages. That was the same. That was also the case with 3D construction much earlier in the run. Uh, it would be a lot slower to do 10 experts than it would be to do 20 novice or 7 genius or any combination. The fastest ways uh, so far done that any better. we can determine for neural ma maze and for 3D construction are just to do all of it on novice level. Same goes for pen toad. And 
because the puzzles are randomized, the chance for time save and loss well, you know comes with the luck. Uh, you don't, you don't have too much control over it. Although it is possible for you to misread a map, even if it's like not really fair. Like they ask you to take a dumb route that's not worth checking, but it turns out to be the right route. It is possible for that, and it has killed one of my run attempts. Couldn't have done that any better. But we won't be seeing that here. This is pretty fast. Um, the random element, I guess, just is how long does it take to beat each puzzle? Uh, some of these require you to jump through more hoops than others. As in, go through more teleports. Almost all of them, actually every single one I've ever seen, I'm pretty sure, requires you to go through at least one tunnel Whoa, thing. That was <laughs> one colored tube. Every puzzle. And the less you have to go through the colored tubes, it seems the faster overall. So usually you want to have that one colored tube, and that's it. Per stage. But you don't have any control over it, and I, even to go for the 122, I knew that I had enough leeway well, you know to put this level late enough in the run because it didn't matter to me that much if I got a good time or a bad time. And it did bite me once. I did reset all based on this stage one time. And as a matter of fact, it could have done it again here. Because uh, this run isn't quite fast enough for me to really be satisfied. You'll see the best possible time. A 122.51. That's higher than the final time. So you know I'm going to get a gold. Um, and that's really was important to me in this particular scenario i wouldn't have been able to get that 122 without a good neural maze that's not always the case i'm not happy going into neural maze with that being the case but i was relying on this one Look, and it was feeling good it was feeling good look at us flowing through so far we haven't made any dead ends wrong turns or too many i don't think you had a single extra color tube yet I don't know how many of these have felt fast. You know, sometimes you have to go up and down three or four times. Other times, you like Whoa, five or six times. Was... And the dialogue skip from Dr. Edna is very simple. There's a variety of celebratory well, you know, sounds. Really All you have to do is spam the next difficulty button or any of the difficulty buttons except the one that you're already on. While the celebration sound is happening, your score will go up. You'll have skipped Dr. Edna. Couldn't have done that any better. I know her name's actually Dr. Elena, isn't it? I never get a chance to hear it. I think the only time it's ever mentioned is the uh, opening cutscene. Oh well, you know. His uh, Dr. Brain's niece, Dr. Elena. Whoa, that was... done that any better all by myself I get tripped up by some of these starts that start in particular when one of the directions leads to a tube a colored tube and then the other one um, comes off of a different part of the start block it's sometimes hard for me to see most of this is after you play it a while you recognize the patterns pretty well um, you're always gonna need to get to a colored tube to get to the finish and you can see which teleporter will get you to that colored tube and then you, they always look like the the same shapes you know you're gonna have the the three blocked the three tile blocks you know Whoa, that was side great. by side you'll have these l-shaped ones and you'll have these z-shaped ones there's a mistake that was a mistake i think um there might not have been any way for me to know that that was the wrong one to go in. And there, I picked the better shape. You know, you see the Z shape a lot more often than this, the little co shape, the little square shape. Uh, but Could even with the best recognition battle. possible, you have to rely on the way the stages are built to uh, lead you to the finish quickly. 
I'd say there's about a minute that you could lose or gain on this stage. Maybe more. I mean, it's Look, 20 you know, of them. I really like so break it down. The fastest possible one you've ever seen, which I've never bothered timing. What if all of them were equal to that, which is almost uh, a likelihood of zero, but if they were, how fast would that be? Someone should make a task of this game. Whoa, that was great fun. Let's do it. It's kind of a fun puzzle to do, you know, to play through and pass Couldn't the time with. Uh, the harder difficulties are pretty fun to do as well, to actually try and solve a difficult thing. I mean, this one feels good when you solve them and they flow nicely, and it's annoying when you make a mistake, so there's still that level of accomplishment when it flows nicely. You're doing well. Uh, but the harder difficulties are actually a challenge, and Congratulations. it feels like you're really you playing a maze, maze if, you, if you're interested in a maze game. One of the other brain sections. Continued play is at your discretion. And that's it. That's the time save we needed to make the 122 much more likely. Entering the word surge. Word surge is the only Dr. Brain puzzle I've seen that can be skipped and then still let you beat the game. So we'll be skipping the. We're gonna do the word surge skip here. Um, it's actually nerve wracking. I don't know why I have this so low in the run. It's so fast, and if you mess it up. It's a devastating loss. So the starting position of this puzzle is the same every time. So the moves you do to solve it are... You could just do them every time. It'll always work. Um, but the glitch here that you're seeing is skipping the puzzle. Once you've solved one, you can do Dr. Elena's dialogue skip. Right there. You do that by clicking into the difficulty area and then clicking on a different difficulty. Because she's going to say... You are smart, and then she's going to say, you this puzzle is a percentage complete. One of the other brain sections. So if you do the clicks Continue in the correct sequence, you can skip this puzzle. <laughs> and apparently I lose three seconds. It's a nerve-wracking skip. If you mess up, you'll switch difficulties, and then you won't be able to get that uh, completed puzzle layout back. And you'll have to play the puzzle again. And now we come to file sorting. file sorting. This is the last of the choosable stages from stage orders. And it's last on my list. It's hard for me to explain why. It might just... I thought about it and I, and I like put it there for a reason, I remember. <laughs> so this puzzle... It, what you have to do... Is listen again. Rathbone will tell you uh, items, and he'll show them to you on screen, so you can do this with visuals, too. And you put them in the drawers, and after a while, he'll ask you to take them back out. And on expert level and genius level, he moves the drawers around. Uh, moving the drawers around is this slow animation let's right here. Things up a bit. He says, let's mix things up a bit. And then they swap. So if you do any of the genius level puzzles, it takes longer, because he does that between every drawer. Uh, whereas on expert level, he does it less often. So they're all slower <laughs> on genius level. So the 10 experts is the route for the any percent. And here's what's happening. Um, I'm clicking on the drawers as soon as I can to try and get his maximum time save. These puzzles are the same every time. Every single thing, except the only the thing that randomizes is where the drawers swap to. So he picks random drawers to swap. But the order of items, and then the order they this go in, the order they come out, complete. is always the same. 
and I choose the same drawers every time. I also have it written down for reference. Um, so if I make a mistake on this, it makes me redo the whole puzzle. If he, if he thwaps his TV, he's gonna say retrieve this item. If you click on the wrong one, you have to redo the whole stage. And so my mentality was, if I click on the wrong drawer, I'm resetting no matter what. So it's all or nothing, and I should just have the confidence that I'm going to finish the run with a perfect file sort. Because it's that's the way it's going to be. And that is the way this would have been. If I had made, if I clicked on the wrong, spoiler alert, I don't click on any of the wrong drawers. If I had, I would have lost so much time and I would have reset for sure. So because they're in the same order, the way that you can save or lose time is... Uh, there's no time limit on this puzzle. If he asks you to click on a drawer, you can wait before clicking on it, or you can try oh, to click no. on it as soon as possible. Let's mix things so no time to think. There's a lot of pressure on you when you're doing this puzzle. You better get it right. And you can't even stop and wait. I think I probably lost a few seconds, maybe a few, maybe even up to 10 seconds, maybe more than 10 seconds. Uh, just because I wasn't fast enough at reacting to what was happening, clicking. Complete. You know, when you, when something comes up on screen, you gotta click on that drawer. You can't forget. You can't forget. <laughs> click, right? Like, you can spam click too, but you just gotta keep looking. Uh, the skip for the Dr. Elena dialogue. Let's switch. You don't do it. Um, it could be there's more to be discovered with this, the dialogue skip on this stage, but what happens when you try to do it is the same as motor programming, I think, where it won't actually advance to the next level. Uh, that also happens on Synaptic Cleft. And if you switch difficulties to and from, it's slower because the animation happens at the start of the stage. The animation of the drawer swapping. In Synaptic Cleft, we were swapping difficulties because the animation happens when you completed a stage. So swapping difficulties skipped that. But here, all it would skip Let's is Dr. Elena talking, and we would actually have to watch the two drawer opening and closing animations for both diff for, for each difficulty, right? One for each difficulty. So instead, we don't go for it at all. We just listen to the dialogue. But you do have to keep clicking through it, because there's like some that you can skip, but you can't skip the percentage one, and then the levels, there's one before the level starts, so you need to click through some stuff. Or you will lose time. This section is now 30% complete. Ratbone's lips go bop. They move. I mean, that's that's indicated that I've skipped some dialogue. I guess if I'm frame perfect, they don't move. I don't know. Let's switch the drawers. This level is a reference to the Twilight Zone. And the items are always in the same order. Not only in the levels, but internally. The oh, no. There's a list of items, and Let's each level switch. starts on a different one, but they all appear in order. That's what makes this one so learnable. <laughs> it really um, was designed, I suppose, the way they explain it Let's in the, in the instructions. It is a memory testing puzzle, which it still is when you do it when you already know what it is. But it's supposed to be a short-term memory testing puzzle, Let's mix like Simon up. says, but you know, with a twist. Instead, it's way different, and all you have to do is play it a couple times for that to happen. That's This isn't even something that would only occur to speedrunners playing this game. If you've played this a few times, the puzzle is different than the first time you play it, because it's the same. It's different because it's the same, if that makes any sense. Let's switch the drawers. Once you know the order of the items, the skill required to beat Let's the stage is no longer up. a short-term memory. It's the ability to keep track of, or to you know, recreate a sequence. any way you can. I mean, I use visual references. I have this written down while I was playing it. I usually had my finger on one of the items that was coming up next. 
when he hits the screen, he'll say retrieve. But you don't hear him say that because I click so fast because my finger's on where it's written. And it'll usually have the color. <laughs> so I better make sure I put them in the same colors every time. There's still a lot of pressure on me on this. Somehow, it's still possible to mess this up. Even with the aid, like all the help I mentioned. And I can still mess this up. And if it did, the run would end. I think I reset once Let's after putting file sorting last. In the 128, I'm think, pretty sure it's first. Or uh, second, right after synaptic cleft. Let's switch the drawers. Yeah, this puzzle's pretty long as well, and it's nerve-wracking. So at the end of a long-ish run like this, one ten minutes in, one hour ten minutes in, you yeah, start to feel it. I start this to feel like sick during this, this stage. Complete. Actually, uh, definitely would not be able to get a time this fast if I. Um, Tried to do commentary at the same time as playing. Oh no! Let's mix things up a bit. So after this is the final stage, and I suppose for any percent, a sub 120 with some impeccable luck and uh, skill using the Let's current strategies available is uh, of, is possible. I would think that a uh, really good pen toad would be required compared to what's on what's on my run. Let's mix things up. And we'd need an additional two minutes thirty five seconds. So we'd have to find some uh, some fix ups that I made some mistakes on in this run to get a sub one twenty in the future. Not something I'm gonna gun for unless uh, my time gets beaten. But there is the all genius levels uh, to look into for the future. So, let's mix things. And up. whether I want to play the word search puzzle without skipping it, uh, I think I'm happy to get times in both. <laughs> but the sad part is, if it's a full game run, maybe it's just not necessary to put word search in there. It's let's just a, it would just be silly to have like a run where all your other stages are good. And then you have to play word search. Like you decide in that moment, do I want to skip it? and go for this category, that category. So I think full game runs, sorry word surge, you're not necessary. Uh, could be a IL, IL leaderboard only. Complete. Um, but for all genius mode, yeah, that means Marty might have to go for another run too if he wants to save all that time. Um, but it does have to be the max points. So <laughs> you need to solve the first level of genius word search. So new strats coming up when I start to go for that. Let's mix um, up. Everything else, uh, I have no idea how to do Neural Maze on Genius. Uh, no idea how to do, let's see, file sorting on Genius. That's going to take a long time a lot let's to learn. A couple days at least. Oh, 3D construction. Oh, no. I, I have no idea how to do that on Genius. That's going to take some time to learn quite a lot. Uh, but I'll just learn them all until Let's they're things up a bit. Until they're fast. And then we'll get that. Um, I'll probably try to get a lot of stuff on the leaderboard for this game before moving to a different Dr. Brain. So with Island of Dr. Let's Brain, the, drawers. the harder difficulties aren't quite as appealing to me. But for this, ILs are, are appealing to me. Just because, like I said, when you string all of the levels together, you're not going to play at your best. You can't. <laughs> You need to play through a puzzle, play it again, get a Let's faster time. Things up a bit. So I actually, I really am interested in setting up an IL leaderboard for this, the same way I did with Zoom Beanies. Let's switch the drawers. That means I'll also be interested in making some tutorial videos for some of the ILs. Let's mix this one, up a bit. if we went into detail. I mean, I could verbally give references of how to play each stage. Uh, but I think the greatest way that someone could learn to speedrun this is to do it uh, and write write down the answers. 
This section is now uh, or memorize them complete. And be prepared to click on them as soon as they appear on screen. You want to cut down on any dialogue, uh, unnecessary dialogue. The only dialogue you should be hearing is, let's mix things up a bit. Let's switch the drawers. And let's Dr. Elena telling you what percent of the way through you are. Let's mix things up a bit. I will say after playing a few times, I got to know which of these stages were more or less likely to have a mistake caused on them. Uh, there are a few stages where you're forced to put uh, multiple objects into the same color drawer. There's going to be more than four objects in the drawers at the same time. And you have to keep track of where they switch to as well. So uh, that would make this impossible for, um, like, if you look away. <laughs> like, like if you weren't allowed to watch the drawers switch, and then you just open your eyes and then see them when you have to pick something. That would make it really hard, like, impossible to do that. Uh, I would wonder, like, blindfolded, <laughs> if that's possible in this. Um, oh, no. But that's right. So I learned which ones were easy, Let's which ones were hard. So where I felt more, uh, it, it was more important to focus, or I could feel more comfortable or less comfortable. I didn't want to like feel too comfortable and complacent and then miss a switch and click on the wrong thing. Let's mix I also didn't want to overthink, get hypersensitive and nervous and click on the wrong thing by second guessing myself. So learning which of the stages were more likely to cause that and being aware of that helped. Uh, and those were the ones where you would have to fill more than four drawers at a time. I believe the seventh out of tenth stage was one of the longest, uh, like 19 moves or something. Some of them were longer. Uh, they could be as short as 12 moves. Like, um, opening and closings, I mean, by moves. Openings and closings. Total. Let's switch uh, the drawer. There are others that were like 19 moves. This section is now 90% complete. Get a fun one for the 10th. This one does feel like a victory lap, because the 10th puzzle in uh, in file sorting doesn't have all that many moves to it. It's uh, it's done in under 17 moves or whatever. And uh, it, it feels kind of cool, because you have to fill up five drawers, six drawers, I think. You have to put two objects into drawers that are all, like already another color of that same same color drawer has something in it so, but it's a fun one because it's over in a few moves so you only have to keep track of what's where for a couple of moves rather than like the other stage stage seven where you have to keep track for a long time so this one does feel like a victory lap right before dreamland but so that's the, that's another uh, point is that there really is no victory lap because the final stage that you're forced to do i'd never practiced it i know You'll see there's still mistakes. There's a lot of time save that could be done after this on the final stage. Because oh, no. I just didn't care. It's just like, I don't even have a choice. It has to be last. Just when you get there with a crazy high amount of time save, like that's one of the ILs that I do not care about. Because you can't even theoretically play it without a save state. Or like a, like once you, once you beat a puzzle, it's beaten in this game. But uh, it'll still be there. There's still a possibility of a leaderboard for Dreamland. It's just that I don't care about it as much in your full game run because it has to be last. Great job. Dr. You're never going to get a. Has his memory skills returned <laughs> by your it's so stressful to imagine getting an absolutely perfect Dreamland, but you'll see coming up. Uh, I'm excited about this time. We, we got a gold. We saved 10 seconds on file sorting. This is impressive. Uh, because that means we didn't have to hear any unnecessary dialogue or very much at all. I don't know how much faster that could go. And now our best possible time is looking good in the 122 range. Uh, Marty K is saying here that you can copy paste your file here. 
You don't have to Not save state. You can dream, you can copy man. files. I was trying that. I could. I'll have to. I'll have to figure that out too. I'm excited now because all we have to do is beat the stage. Uh, I knew I wanted to get that 122. So we got to save some. It says we can save 22 here, and at the time I kind of thought that was my real gold. So our route for this is we're going to do six genius levels and then we're going to do one expert. It just seems easier, the expert one. Uh, not perfect there. I could have gone right to the right to the goal. But yeah, that's that's right. This I didn't practice the stitch. So anyone looking for a a new world record, there's some time to be saved here. Uh, I thought that maybe yeah, 22 seconds would be good if we save 22. Even and then I had an 18 second buffer. I was fine with that. Because I knew that all I had to do was not die a bunch of times <laughs> and not uh, fail the final stage. This section is now 30%. And if I did fail the final stage, just reset it faster than I did in my old 128 world record, where I messed up the final stage and didn't reset it, thinking that I could just keep playing it and fix it. Um, but no, it needed a reset, and I didn't realize. I, I should have swapped back and forth between difficulties to restart the puzzle. Which is something you can do in this puzzle. You cannot do that in every puzzle. This section is now 45% complete. This is the one in particular stage that's very difficult in Dreamland. I would suppose that if you're going for an for ILs, this would be the one that would uh, cause some resets. Certainly there are strats for Dreamland that I haven't even begun, begun to think of. There's like... You can listen to Dr. Elena say, Welcome to the next level. Every level. And the spike balls will move while she's talking. So there's like new strats and setups that I haven't even bothered starting to go for. Uh, there's mistakes. Look at that. We missed again. Yeah, I did not consider this as vital to getting a time. So this one certainly would be a help if you're going to go for a sub 120. Um, even if you're just going to go for a world record. Certainly a lot of time you can cut here. complete. Uh, the, the dialogue skip, I tried it, um, it stops the screen from progressing, you don't get to go to the next stage until you swap difficulties back and forth, so it's slower, uh, you don't want to, you don't want to interrupt Dr. Elena on this one. If you can't tell, if I have not explained the, the stage, but by clicking the mouse, you attract this the ball. It's kind of on the opposite complete. of the first stage we did, Synaptic Cleft, where this clicking the mouse repelled the cow things. In this, the ball is attracted to the click. And you have to press the button, and then go into the exit. Some of them have multiple buttons. If you press it again, it closes the exit. If you die, if you hit a spike ball, it closes the exit. But if you hit a teleporter, it just takes you to the blue ring. This section is now 90%. There, I might have been able to click on that difficulty a little sooner. But we're almost done here. Zip. We get a quick expert stage. <laughs> I knew how to beat that one. And, successfully healed and we got our brain. final time of a 122.35. We can watch the intelligence get restored for Dr. Brain. That's the any percent run of this game that I wanted. Well, my brainy uncle, now that we have brought you back to your senses, perhaps you will admit it was your cheese bee that swallowed the cheese filter, causing the malfunction. Thanks for watching, anyone in the video right now. This probably will help you understand what's going on in the run. If you watch this with the version with no commentary, I hope this cleared some things up for you as to how I got this video made. A thank you must be given to Marty K, who did, had the record before me and whose video I took so many strats from. I copied a lot of stuff off of that video. It's the whole basis for this run, essentially. 
So Marty K was in the chat watching me while I was doing this as well. Really supportive. And I think he might be starting up with some runs as well. He submitted a pento time. <laughs> you can expect more Dr. Brain speedruns, but I won't be going for any percent loss mines. Not until this gets beaten. Thank you, Dr. Brain. I'd say as a speedrun, this one has a lot of skill ceilings, a lot of intensity and difficulty at this at this particular point in time. I don't know how I'd feel if anything else came about as a potential puzzle skip. Um, and it's so vastly different from the island of Dr. Brain that I can't really compare. This one definitely took me a lot longer to be satisfied with, uh, but that's because I felt the need to be pushed on those puzzles. In um, the island of Dr. Brain, I felt pushed to get to the end of the game er quickly, but there's a lot of things in there that I was comfortable uh, getting time losses on. You know, and uh, if someone else feels the need to beat that time, I have that time there, you can beat that. This, I really wanted to get it about as fast as I could before I, before I even felt comfortable with it. Here we got the credits. These play out in the highlight. Thanks for the people in the chat right now. Sad Moody and Jeet. Jeet recently beat my world record in Candy Box 2. And beat Nick Hero in the chat too. They've been really kind while I've been recording this commentary. Uh, anyone who was watching me do live attempts also been really patient while I reset Synaptic Cleft over and over again. I play pretty good, mm -hmm. Listen, Lichten. You can expect some candy box 2 speed running from me. There's new tech with Jeet's new world record. First person to beat my record in almost a year. And not many people, a lot have tried. Not that many, but you know, some have tried. <laughs> but very, very few have been able to do it. So it's impressive. Well done, Jeet. Marty K, I hope you run the game more. This one, Lost Mind. Maybe look into the other Dr. Brains. This game was run in DOSBox emulator using uh, Windows 3.1. If you need any help playing this game, you could Google it or you can go to speedrun.com and find this game there where me and Marty K are both moderators and we can help explain anything to anyone who needs it. I'm Danzel Glovington, and thanks for watching.